Welcome to The Crossroads. I'm Martin Anthony, and uh, it's always nice to have you visiting. And uh, today I have uh, John Holder, who him and I are going to talk about fish. So, John, welcome to the show. How Thank are you? you. Doing? Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's something that uh, people don't always sort of think about off the top of their head when they're going to the store or market and to buy food. Yes. And you do something that's quite unique because you're like a long way before anyone actually touches the food that you deal with. And uh, uh, what is it exactly you do? What's your, what's your, your, your line of work? I'm in the aquaculture business. Mm -hmm. Now, depending who you talk to, I'm good or bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Especially in this area. Well, yeah, well, this is something that is quite, a, quite an interesting topic because that's why I wanted you here because it's something that, you know, people hear a lot of stuff. And, and, you know, especially in our modern day and age with, you know, fake news and sort of, you know, corporate sponsorship placement news and things like that. It's hard to always get all the, the facts. And someone who's been in the industry as long as you have probably has some of the, the real information that people are probably looking for. Because let's face it, it's, it's, it's part of our food chain now. The human food chain has been modified from just go and catch it and put it in our mouths. And so aquaculture is this thing that's been around for how long? A decade or two, or how well, long actually, it's been around for thousands of years. Thousands of years. Okay. But here in BC, it started in the mid '80s in a bit larger scale. Mm -hmm. That's when the net pens came. Right. But before that, we had lots of trout farmers, you know, on land, and that's what I do. I, I do land-based aquaculture. I do design. Okay. All for right. land-based aquaculture. Right. I've been in the business nearly 45 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of the old timers. One of the old timers, <laughs> yeah. Old school, analog. <laughs> and uh, I was a farmer for just over 25 years. Right. Then it was 24 seven. Right. You know, so I decided, okay, I'm in my 50s, so let's do something different. So I put out my shingle. Right. Uh, JLH Consulting. Mm -hmm. And I've been designing land-based systems since. Right. And in the, those 19, 20 years, the industry has changed so much that now land base is viable. Right. Okay. Because this is part of what my show is all about is to look at the fact that I've been away from Canada for 15 years and I'm back now and I'm wanting to catch up on certain things. Now you're saying the net pen th before that was like in the, in the ocean, they put a, some nets up and they yep. raise fish in there. Mm -hmm. And that's what I kind of recall. I know there was also, there's like the hatcheries you see. I remember going when I was a kid up to Weaver Creek uh, fish hatchery up in uh, the Fraser Valley. And they had like the, the spawning channels and stuff like that. And that's kind of what I'm aware of what's happened in sort of the, you know, how humans work with this sort of thing. Now, uh, What's changed and how has it changed? Because you said now it's viable. What's, what's changed in this, in this land-based uh, aquaculture? Well, the technology. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's leaps and bounds. Back in the old days, you know, 20 years ago, we didn't have the high efficiency pumps that we have today mm -hmm. because nobody wanted to manufacture them because it was too small. Right. Now, the industry has is, is, is greatly expanded. Uh, the major salmon companies in the province, they have lots of land-based aquaculture in mm -hmm. hatcheries right so they take the fish to 100 grams and then they put them out to sea but even that is evolving they're doing what they call super smolts now so they actually take them past the 100 grams to 500 800 or a kilo right then they put them out in the salt water hmm. and that's massive investments lots of people employed and the species has greatly increased in number uh, before it's just salmon or trout now it's tilapia sea bass sea bream um, even with shellfish, uh, freshwater, saltwater, cool water, warm water, the list goes on and on and on. Uh -huh. And it's still really exciting right. and, and innovative. Right. Well, this is the thing where, you know, it's, I've been finding that, um, you know, there is the sort of the mentality of, well, we should just, you know, let things happen naturally. Like people are talking about like with farming, with you know, and with with livestock, with with uh, you know aquaculture and that sort of thing. Where is it necessary 
to do this right now? Is it just a business? Is it something that's necessary for us as a species to continue on and get the protein we need to survive? Or Well, the oceans are pretty well at their limit to supply the seafood that we need. Honestly, seafood's a very good f a protein for people to eat. Mm -hmm. Mega-3s, mega-6, mega-9s, and so on. Um, and the oceans, like I said, can only provide so much. Now, people say, well, you're feeding fish to make fish. Well, that used to be the case. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of the proteins in, in fish feed now are plant-based. Right, okay. So it's evolving. We mm -hmm. still need some fish meal and fish oil, always will, mm -hmm. for salmonids. Right. But other species, they can be a totally vegetarian diet. Right. So it opens okay. up even more areas we can get into. Yeah. Well, this is the thing where how much, you know, I hate using the term, but how much bang for the buck you get out of farming. I know that, you know, for many years, since like the 50s, you know, the... Um, uh, chemical revolution for farming, put all this, spray all this stuff and you'll have twice the yield. And, you know, but we now find out that this is also creating a lot of, putting a lot of toxins into the soil, into our water tables. Uh, between, like, looking at this with this, as you said, kind of a closed environment for, for raising fish, it, you have, it, it, how much effect does it have on the environment, even though it's a closed system? Does it have more or less? Or? Less. Because like you say, it's, clo it's closed contained. It's not zero discharge. Mm -hmm. There's no okay. such thing as zero discharge. Right. It doesn't exist. Okay. <laughs> All right. So with uh, RAS, Recircling Aquaculture System, we have complete control of the environment the fish is in. Mm -hmm. We know how much oxygen it needs or we can supply. The CO2, how much? Ammonia. We can take that from ammonia down to nitrate through nitrification. Uh, solids removal, very, like within two minutes after that fish defecates or that feed is in the water, it's out of the system. Right. And captured by drum filters and so on. Uh -huh. Now, we also have these waste elements as another uh, revenue stream. Fish feces is fantastic fertilizer. Okay. It can be composted or it can be put on a sludge on the farmer's fields. Right, okay. The carbon dioxide. Now, I, everybody's heard of hydroponics, right? now we're doing aquaponics. So we have the fish supplying the nutrients for the plants as well as the CO2. Right. And wow. it, it's amazing. One kilo of fish, seven to 20 kilos of greens, herbs, lettuces, tomatoes, cucumbers. It's amazing. Wow. So that you're, it's not just, okay, here's, a, here's something, we're gonna make this fish, there's all this stuff that's gonna get dumped down the sink. It's not, it's, it's actually, it, it's creating secondary uh, growth industries. Yes, so, yes. Wow. And the aquaponics, that's where the jobs are. Like right. you might have a fish farm that has six people right. working at it, and the aquaponics end, you'd have 20. Really? Yes. So it's a, it's a, it's a growth industry that also has real hands-on employment then as well. Correct. Wow. And a thousand tons of fish you can do in an acre. A thousand tons of fish in an acre. Okay. Yes. I'm trying to think of <laughs> fish growing off trees and stuff, but <laughs> it's amazing. But wow. Yeah. yeah. And your water use, well, we don't use water, we borrow water. Right. Okay, some of the fish and the plants take a little bit of water and a little right. bit to, uh, to evaporation. Mm -hmm. But the waste stream, which is usually 3% of the volume, is exchanged per day. And that goes into a constructed wetland. Right. So it percolates back into the aquifer and gets reused. Really? Okay. So that's, you know, it, it seems that um, uh, that chain is there. How about like for processing and stuff like that? Is it the same once the fish is, is developed and is ready for harvest? It, it's the same process that happens there? Uh, yes, the same process, but everybody's heard of the 100 mile diet, right? Okay. <laughs> oh, no. I've been away 15 years, okay, remember. Okay. I don't know what that 100 mile diet Well, is. try to grow your food within 100 miles oh, okay. of the consumer. Right. So now there's a new term, coined the last few years, urban aquaculture. Urban aquaculture. Yeah, okay. so we can set up in close to cities, if not in the city. Right. So the carbon footprint, everybody's talking about carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. Well, we're within 100 miles of the, of the consumer. So there's no large trucking anymore. 
Mm -hmm. The um, kilowatt hours to produce a pound of fish or a kilo of fish is roughly one kilowatt per pound or 2.3, 2.2 kilowatts per kilo of fish. And that's very, very efficient. Mm -hmm. And we, you mentioned earlier about uh, feed. Fish is the best con converter out there. Right. Okay. We're roughly one to one. Wow. <laughs> one kilo of feed produces one kilo of fish. Really? Yes. Wow. So <clears throat> chickens, I think it's three to four to one. Dairy cattle or beef cattle is like seven to one. Pork is from five to one. So we're doing very well. That seems to be the uh, the food of the future. Do you think? Is this what's well, what, we're, what we're looking at? Is it if uh, we want seafood? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fishermen are doing a good job, but it's mm -hmm. not, in my opinion, sustainable over the long run. Mm -hmm. uh, the net pen guys, they're doing a good job. I think it's sustainable if run properly. I'm in closed containment. Right. So of course, I think yeah. I know closed containment can do a good job. Mm -hmm. The only disadvantage, if there is one, is capital. Right. Okay. It so, takes more money to do a closed containment system yeah, than it does an open. You don't have to go and build an ocean. The ocean's there. You can put a net in there, a net pen in there, and, right. and do that. But there are certain issues that people are people are very highly opposed. I find or polarized uh, when it comes to the net pen side of it. Is it as bad as people say? I'm just curious because, like you know, I'm I, I'm 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 a news reader. I read news. You know, I see it. Is it like? Because I know a lot of people say, ah, it's you know. Is it as bad, or could, are there, what, what are the pluses, what are the negatives? I'm curious. Well, in my opinion, now this is just my opinion, yeah. but I've been around this industry for 44 years. Mm -hmm. Back in the 80s, it was the gold rush mentality, mm -hmm. and it was bad. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest with that. Uh, we didn't have the technology we had. We didn't have the, the, um, the equipment to actually test the sites, mm -hmm. current flow, so yeah. on and so on. Now we do. So we're locating sites, they are locating sites in good spots where they have good flushing. Mm -hmm. And honestly, uh, vaccines, the antibiotic use in, in fish farms is oh, one one hundredth, if not one thousandth of what it was back in the 80s. Okay. So it's really improved. Right. So it's kind of like going from a steam locomotive with coal smoke coming out to, you know, a more efficient electric Hybrid. High speed rail. I would say a hybrid. Hy hybrid. A little bit of gas, a little bit of, but most electricity. Right. Okay. Okay. But so. it, it, if it's done properly, I, I can't see a problem with yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Because this is the thing that I'm always finding because, you know, when I travel, you know, people would, you know, say to me, well, you know, look at what's going on here and there. And you look at, you know, one thing was, you know, I'll, I'll probably get a lot of, uh, con you know, maybe create some controversy here with, you know, like seal hunt. Okay, there's a seal hunt. You can be against it or for it or whatever. Most people are against it. It's an awful thing. But you also have to remember that all the whales were fished nearly to extinction, yes. which ate those things. Those seals eat a lot of fish, and we are consumers of fish. Those seals, the, the nat nature's balance has been skewed. So I can't always argue on one side of that. I can, I can I personally see both sides of that. Is that kind of what's happening now? What's happening with our fish stocks in the oceans? Why do we have to go to this farming? Is it loss of fish? Are predators eating all the fish? Is it human just mass consumption, overfishing? What's your opinion on that, your side on that? Well, <laughs> you don't have to answer no, it. You know, no, I'm not going to corner climate you. Climate change is number yeah. one, I think. Yeah. Things are changing. We're getting species up in BC from the south we never had before. Seriously. So mm -hmm. things are changing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, forestry, mining, uh, overfishing, the list goes on. So in my opinion, if we want seafood down the road, we have to farm it either in the ocean or on land. We have to do it, mm -hmm. right? And the, the technology is there. Um, Land-based systems in the last few years are now competitive. Even mm -hmm. with the extra capital mm -hmm. are now competitive with... I don't want to say salmon because salmon, salmon is a commodity, but there's other things we can grow on land-based other than salmon. Mm -hmm. um, Atlantic salmon. Oh. We can do coho, we can do steelhead. Um, those are the red-fished, red-fleshed fish, but there's others like tilapia, bear mundi, sea bass, sea bream. What we, we can produce at a good rate and a good margin. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing, margin, because right. we're all in business. 
Well, this is this you is know? the thing that you know people sort of always want this. They have this sort of uh, romantic image in their head of there's the cow walking to the barn to be milked, and you know, and then we get our glass of milk, and it's a whole thing. But it's it, it is a business, and I know that a lot of people, and myself included, want to make sure that that business has some some uh, humanity applied to the the creatures that are being used and you know for milk or for meat or whatever and you know it's something that is uh you know it's it is a reality you know we, we are people are going to eat and some people will go vegan or vegetarian route mm -hmm. people will go to uh, uh route more with you know towards fish and you know white meats that sort of thing and when it comes to the business of it all, uh, the fish have, uh, are they are grown in a natural state? Are they accelerated in any way to grow? Or is it just kind of like, here's the waterway, the fish grow, they're fed, you know, I guess somewhat to, is, how is that business uh, adapting to other similar businesses like raising cattle, feedlots and things like that? Is it? Well, uh, land-based systems are sort of based on the chicken industry to a certain extent. Okay. Right? Right. Um, there's no GMO that mm -hmm. we do. There are GMO salmon out there now. All right. I don't agree with that, but that's mm -hmm. another story. I don't yeah. want to really yeah. get yeah. into okay, it. Okay, well, yeah. But we do selectively breed our fish for the environment they're going to be in. Mm -hmm. Because RAS environments are different than net pens. Mm -hmm. In RAS, we give the fish everything it needs to the optimum the optimum temperature, the, ox the optimum oxygen amount, the optimum carbon dioxide level. So of course they're going to grow mm -hmm. better. Yeah. We also give them custom diets for research to ensure that they, we do get that one-to-one -one conversion. Right. Okay. right? We, do no, we do not use any chemicals. We do not use any antibiotics because it's a closed system. That's great, yeah. So very important is we have to have our stock that comes into the facility, eggs usually, that are disease free. Right. So if, and then it's closed. Right. We, so by the time it gets to the consumer, it's, you're guaranteed a very uh, legitimate, clean, unprocessed product other than fish that's been very well fed and very well oxygen, oxygenated. It's happy fish. Happy fish. Happy so fish. Probably. And can't use the term organic yet. Okay because the feeds aren't there yet. Uh -huh. a, lot of the, a lot of the components are organic, mm -hmm. but fish meal, fish oil, it's wild. Next thing to organic. We right. can't use that label though. Right. But it's, it's and also very sustainable. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what it seems, you know, if, if you can use, can you use like um, vegetable scraps from in that, uh, is that part of the diet? Is it, or do you have to have specifically grow something? Yeah, no, you have to, because it's very well, can, Controlled. Right, okay. So you can't just sort of like no. put a mishmash of no. all the, 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 the no. kitchen scraps in there and throw it in the, in the tank and the fish will eat it up, no? No, not in this country. Developing yeah. countries, possibly. Yeah. Right? Totally different way they do fish over there. Mm -hmm. But our, our feed companies, the main ones, there are ISO companies, mm -hmm. 9,000 9, or whatever number yeah. it is up now. So they're very controlled and the, and the amount of paperwork they have to submit is, you know, very yeah. thick. Okay. So it's, it's a good product. Wow. Well. This is fascinating. I'm learning a lot because it's you know it's something that I'm always concerned about when someone says, "Oh, this is a technology and it's good and it, it works." It seems like what's happened since the '80s uh, has we, we've 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 learned a lot. A lot of te more technology, a lot more design has come into it, and um, I guess just historic empirical data. Is, is important mm -hmm. that way. Uh, before I continue, we're going to take a little short break and uh, we're back at the crossroads. And there we go. We're back with uh, John Holder and we're talking about aquaculture. And the Business of this, this is now on the West Coast in Canada. There, we have these these uh, off uh, onshore fish farms. Mm -hmm. What's you mentioned before the break there that there was um, 
developing countries, other countries. Who buys these systems that you design? Where, where would I find them? Is it just sort of in, you know, where? <laughs> Unfortunately, not too many in Canada. Right? Okay. Unfortunately. But, it is, but there are more and more being developed in Canada, mm -hmm. across the country, mm -hmm. uh, all the provinces. Uh, lots in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, South America, uh, Europe, uh, Africa, mm -hmm. and the biggest one is China. Yeah. Wow. China's developing leaps and bounds wow. with, with aquaculture. But they did it 4,000 years ago. <laughs> all right, okay. Yeah. All right, but now <laughs> it was like ponds and they were feeding them pig feces, duck feces, uh, you know. But now that's changed. Yeah. They're becoming more modern and they want yeah. to become more modern. Right. So, but it's, it's sometimes challenging. And I just like to make out one point. Uh, people do hear failures in land based, so everybody's saying, well, it doesn't work. Uh, I've only had one. And it, my motto is fish are easy, people are hard. Right, okay. And if it's going to fail, it's mostly because of a person. Yeah. Well, and under capitalization. Right. So you have to have the cash flow yes. to get the water flowing properly. <laughs> and then also have your distribution network set up as well, I guess, because once the fish are there, they have to be moved out and processed. Well, that's another thing. Um, you have to pick a species that you can sell right. at a price point where you're yeah. going to make money. Right. So that's, number, that's very important. You just can't say, I'm going to do a fish farm. Yeah. I'm going to do uh, some kind of a funny fish. Yeah. Then he, he raises it up and he says, I'm going to do a blowfish. Or whatever, <laughs> yeah. right. Then he can't sell it. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> at the margin he needs. Yeah. What about power requirements? Is there any sort of, uh, you know, you, obviously if you have pumps, you need some electricity. Yes. Uh, you're using grid. Can, can these systems be off-grid as well? Is it possible to do that? or It's hard because, yeah. like I said earlier, it's roughly 2.2 kilowatts per kilogram produced. So you do that times 1,000. Right. Times 1,000 because that, that's 1,000 tons. So right. it's a million kilowatt or million uh, uh, kilograms. Yeah. So it's 2.2 million kilowatts. Right. That's a lot. Yeah, okay. So you can supplement it, uh, your lighting and, and your office, whatever, with solar or wind. Right. But it's pretty hard to do. Right, okay. Off the so grid. It's, it is, there, there are certain dependencies on there. And I was thinking about that. What happens if there's uh, something happens, the power goes out? I guess you probably have a lot of uh, potential uh, fertilizer now in the tanks. No, if no, you lose. No, 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 because we have backups. Oh, okay. So a uh, backup generator right, okay. can be gas or diesel, preferably gas, because mm -hmm. diesels, you don't have to worry about spills. We have two in case that first one doesn't start. Okay. All right. So you have, <laughs> you're making sure it's... Yes. And they're exercised yeah. constantly. Yeah. Well, that's why I find, because like with the, uh, with the net pen type thing, if there's a storm or something, that can cause a problem. If there's a, uh, even an errant sea vessel can go through. What... I read recently about swarms of jellyfish attacking these <laughs> these yep, things can happen. now. See, like you can't, you, you have no control. You know, it's 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 kind of scary when you think that something with no brain can suddenly swarm up and mm -hmm. attack a, a pen full of salmon. Mother it's, nature can be cruel at times. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so it's just pay your electric bill, and you're being you're you're pretty good with. Well, with, usually, <laughs> yes, yeah. usually. But they're like like I said, we have backups. Um, yeah. We have monitors. Um, <laughs> Today, with, with modern technology, computers, and whatnot, we can we can dial in or on the internet, not dial in anymore. Use the internet mm -hmm. to say, okay, this farm has a deal of ten right now. It has temperature. We can monitor it miles mm -hmm. away. I can be. I have clients where they want me to check on their farm from afar. So I could be in China and they have a farm in New York. I just go on the internet and say. Oh, this yeah, is what the water parameters, and, it's all log, yeah. yeah. We have cameras where I can, from afar, get into the camera and move it around and say, okay, your fish are fine. Yeah. Yeah, so the technology is really advanced. That's really cool. I, I'm finding this something that, you know, I, I sort of walked into this going, okay, I'm going to talk about aquaculture, I'm going to learn a bit about fish, but I'm learning more about the, the you know, the, the science of, of making food happen. Yes. And that's what's really fascinating. I, what you said earlier about, you know, uh, sustainability and, you know, 
how we have to look at our, our food system, uh, that this sounds like it's, it's, it's uh, something that we should be aware of. Is it something that, you know, do you sort of get on your soapbox and say, hey, we have to do more of this? Or is it more business for you? Is it something that has that sort of um, superhero attachment <laughs> to you? <laughs> Well, as you can probably see, I get a little animated. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing this for nearly 45 years, and it still excites me. Yeah. Because I know it's a good thing. Yeah. Right? So I like to promote it, land-based, and I think eventually, whenever, the net pens have a, a role, but as time goes on and we get better at what we're doing, it is going to go on to land more and more. Yeah. Because Mother Nature can't have the biggest clout on land as it can in the, in the open environment. Right. Well, you can you can at least you know the um, uh, there's I forget there's some old sailors expression about the sea and you know don't turn your back to the waves or some I don't know what it is but right. you know it, it is you know it, it's something that can change in a moment and on land you can at least protect that you can you can you, you have more fewer variables I guess and when you can control the environment so well. It sounds like it's a, it's it's a, something that can uh, be beneficial for employment. It's beneficial for environment. It's beneficial for the quality of the food you're going to eat. And uh, I think that's something that's really good. Any last words you would like to say on? Well, we have what they call SOPs, standards of practice, mm -hmm. and it's not you got to be diligent. Certain things have to be done every day. Yeah. So that's why I said fish are easy, people are hard. People get lazy sometimes. Yeah. But in this business, RAS business, no. no. There's certain protocols you've got to follow, and as long as you follow those, you'll be successful. Yeah, that's great. Well, John, thanks for being on the show, and uh, I'd like to talk to you some more, and hopefully in the future we can have a look at uh, one of your projects uh, close up firsthand. So uh, great, thanks again for coming. For everybody out there on the other side of the lens, thanks for watching. I'm Martin Anthony. If you want to reach me, I'm Martin at thecrossroads.tv. The show is Martin at the Crossroads. Very simple to remember. It's on TV. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.